Hey there, it's Austin Meyer, the author of Explain, and today we're going to talk about an incredibly important part of Explain that people don't typically find on their own, so I'm going to show it to you today. And what I'm going to show you today in Explain is something called data output. So people email me from time to time saying, hey Austin, the airplane doesn't go as fast as I want it to, or it doesn't slow down, or it doesn't turn. And in almost every case, it's simply because they aren't controlling the airplane like they think they are, and they're not getting the horsepower or the flap deflection or the control deflection out of the airplane that they expect. And so how you get input into the airplane and what the airplane is doing in response is the thing we have to be able to diagnose. And we diagnose that with something called data output. So let's go to the upper right hand corner of the screen here and see this graphics equalizer icon. I guess it's called the settings window technically. And in the settings window, you go here to the data output tab. You see this data output tab? Now that we're in settings, data output, we are ready to see all of the data that is going into the simulator and coming out. So let's take a look at a few commonly used ones. We really need to diagnose what's going on here. Um, let's go to the, ah yes, joystick, item number eight. Joystick, aileron, elevator, and rudder. I wanna see what joystick data is going into this airplane so I know if I really am getting my full control deflections. Now, next to joystick, aileron, and elevator, there's four different checkboxes. What do they do? Well, the first one is to show in cockpit. This will be a little green number in the upper left-hand corner that'll show me what these joystick deflections are. Uh, the next one is a data graph window. This will show a, a plot, uh, just like we always have for flight tests of real aircraft, showing what the aircraft is doing in a plotting window we can go to a disk file where the data can be uh, observed and analyzed later on. And we can even send it out, uh, data out via UDP over the network so some other computer can analyze the flight while you're flying it. Today, we're going to look at show in cockpit. Boom. I just hit joystick, aileron, elevator, show in cockpit. And you may notice the moment I did that, elevator, aileron, and rudder showed up here in the cockpit display. Well, what do you know? Now that that data is up there, I can see what the joystick input actually is. And so if the airplane doesn't feel like it's accelerating strongly enough, for example, I can see if we've actually got a full throttle input. Well, actually, joystick, aileron, elevator, and rudder is not going to be throttle. Let's get the throttle off of this joystick as well. Where are we going to find that? I know. I'm going to go up here to search and type T H R A ah, throttle. Throttle commanded and actual. Well, why would you have a different command to throttle and actual throttle? Well, FADEX, full authority digital engine, engine controllers, uh, governors on helicopters, all those things can adjust the actual throttle that goes to the airplane and make it different from the commanded throttle that you put in. Let's see what the commanded throttle coming in from the joystick is and the actual throttle it is, uh, throttle is making it to the airplane. Um, why else might an airplane not accelerate as strongly as we think? Well, what if we're dragging a brake? So let's go to gear and brakes. I'm going to output that as well. All right, so now I'm going to close the window. So here we are in our Cirrus now, and we see our elevator, aileron, and rudder, our, our landing gear up or down, the hallways down in this airplane, our wheel brake, our left and right brake addition, uh, addition, you know, from, from differential braking for steering. We also have our throttle handle and the throttle that's actually making to the engine. With these diagnostics that we've just chosen, we can see what's really making to this airplane. So I'm going to pull the stick all the way back. Look at the elevator stick and put upper left. Your YouTube video might not have enough resolution to show this, but it is at 1.0. So sure enough, we have 100% of our deflection up. I'm going to push the stick all the way forwards. Again, the text might be too small for your YouTube video, but it's showing negative 1.0. So yep, the stick going all the way forwards is indeed being registered by X-Plane. Same with all the way left and right. Yep, the aileron is moving all the way left and right and did that on the rudder. Let's go ahead and advance the throttle all the way. I just punched the throttle all the way forwards here on the stick. And as I do it, we see that our throttle is at 1.00 full throttle. So we got full control deflections, full throttle, but we're not moving. Why? Well, brake. Brakes is one of the things we output to data output and the wheel brake is set to one. I'm at the B key, that's gonna turn it off. And well, no surprise, 
100% throttle, 100% control deflection, brakes off, and now we have an airplane that's performing exactly as it should. Now let's just say hypothetically that you maybe think that the Sierra should be able to accelerate faster than this, or maybe it's not making full power for some reason. Let's go right back to data output. I'm gonna type in power. Engine power, yeah. The real airplane gets about 310 horses, and right now, we're only at 280 horsepower, a little less than 310. Why is that? Well, there's a couple things going on. First of all, we've got some altitude, and that altitude means that the air is a bit thinner. And another thing that's going on is we don't have that mixture uh, perfectly set. So let's see if we can grab, <laughs> gotta grab that mixture there, kind of under the throttle, grab that mixture, and as I pull the mixture back, I am watching the turbine inlet temperature, or excuse me, the, uh, uh, the EGT, the exhaust gas temperature come up there on the Garmin's. And as I bring that mixture back and the exhaust gas temperature up, we can see here that the engine horsepower has gone up to 305. <laughs> so in other words, leaning that mixture really got us uh, a lot more power. Now, this engine's gonna overheat. We're about to damage the engine if, if this is in a real airplane. I actually leaned the mixture in a real airplane and climbed the other day and I actually started to smell the smell of the engine starting to overheat. It's like, oh no, 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 that was stupid. And and I uh, and I suddenly rich in the mixture. So you actually don't want to lean the mixture in climb. And so kind of an interesting thing that we learned just now is even though, and this is a new heads up display, that's shift W, I keep hitting it out of habit, W is the cockpit display. An interesting thing that we've learned here is while this is technically rated as a 310 horsepower engine, that doesn't mean you actually get 310 horsepower every time you take off, partially because the air is thinner, partially because you're running it uh, extra rich below your best power mixture to keep the engine cool during climb. So anyway, now we're getting into airplane gossip and that can go on all day long. But the purpose of this video is to understand that if the airplane isn't doing what you think it should do, your answer is to go here to the graphics equalizer, that's the settings window, and in the data output, you can scroll and look at the joystick and the throttle and the power and all the stuff you wonder about, dump it out to the cockpit display, and then you can see numerically what's happening in flight, and this lets you diagnose your questions in X-Plane, why is the airplane doing what it's doing?